and welcome back to Auto Social UK. Today I'm very lucky to be joined by Claire from BMW Cooper Chelmsford. And in today's video I thought we'd start off with some unpopular opinions like I think Nando's is really overrated. I prefer cats to dogs. I hate people that name their cars. Oh, I've got one. to be. It's super high quality and does feel really luxurious and it's now on par with its rivals. However, the interior isn't completely new. It is exactly the same as you'll find in the BMW 3 Series. But that's certainly not a bad thing. After all, everyone loved the interior of the new 3 Series so much, so why change it for this 4 Series model? BMW are also finally catching up with the rest of the industry for technology. The 4 Series is actually the first car in BMW to add Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. 
Plus, previously, when I was reviewing the Mini, I was saying about how the charging pads just weren't big enough to accommodate the largest phones. Well, the charging pad in the 4 Series, as long as some of the other cars in the range, have now been upgraded to fit even the biggest iPhones. The infotainment system is truly brilliant though. All versions get a 10.3 inch display that you can either use as a touchscreen or operate by twisting and pressing the rotary controller between the front seats. The latter method is much less distracting when you're driving and combined with a super intuitive operating system makes it above rivals. Front sport seats come as standard and the 4 Series is a strict four seater with only a two seat rear bench. Part leather upholstery, which is available in a choice of five colours, is also included in the base price, with full leather trim optional. This has got to be the first time I'm taking out a car with just 20 miles on the clock. I really am, apart from obviously the PDI testing and road testing, I really am the first person to have gotten into this car. So I'm super happy about that. Just before I get into the drive, I just want to mention about my sponsor. So this video is once again sponsored by Finset Finance. So Finset are an external finance brokerage and they work with a whole panel of lenders to make sure that they can get you the best possible deal. If you're looking at financing something a little bit special, maybe a classic car or a high performance car, and you're struggling to get it accepted elsewhere, well then why not get in contact with Finset Finance? They make sure they keep you updated throughout the whole process and are super honest and open, which is kind of a game changer when it comes to the finance brokerage world. If you are interested in seeing what they can do for you, then I'll pop all the details in the description box. Right, let's continue with the review. Whilst researching this car, I found hardly anything online about the 420. I found lots about the 430 and loads about the 440i, but not a lot about this entry level vehicle, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Bad for me because it means I haven't been able to do any research. Good for you because during this video, you're gonna see my open and honest opinions on how I find the drive of the 420. This entry level 420i starts off at just under £40,000. So if you don't go mad with your spec and you also don't go for any fa fancy paint colours, then you can get this car under forty grand, which is great for company car drivers. And that's the main reason why BMW expect this car to be the most popular out of all of the 4 Series. It's fitted with a two litre turbocharged four cylinder engine, which produces 181 brake horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque, which to be honest, I think is pretty good for a car in its entry level. Previously, I think BMW have underdone it. Some of the one series, two series engines are a little bit lacklustre, but 181 and naught to 60 in under 7.5 seconds is actually pretty good, especially if you want to get around the 50 miles per gallon that BMW say that this car will do. Comparing this 4 Series to the 3 Series that it's based on, it's actually much lower and it's got a far lower centre of gravity, which means that the handling of this car is very good and it's really comfortable. Now it does have, from standard, all models get something called a variable steering, which does make it quite skittish when you get out on the open road. When you're driving around town, it's fantastic as it's really, really easy to park and manoeuvre. But once you get up to that speed, it does slightly start to feel a little bit like it's got its own mind. But BMW drivers love that. That's the main reason that they hated that the 135i went to a four wheel drive because BMWs like the fact that they kind of do what they want and, and you have to fight it to, to do, make it do what you want. And I think that's a really good thing that BMW have brought some of that driving passion back. If you wanted to reduce that, you can pop it in sport mode and it makes it slightly stiff in suspension and makes it slightly better responding on fast driving. Um, and you do get used to it. It's one of those things that when you first drive it, you think, oh, it's got a little bit about it, but you soon get used to knowing how to drive the car, how to handle the car. Overall though, I think it's nice that it's got a little bit of excitement about it. Another nice thing to note, because recently all I've driven is electric and hybrid cars, 
is the 420 actually makes quite a nice noise. Now, they didn't have to make it make that noise. It's the entry level, it's a two litre, it's got under 200 brake. They could have just kept it completely boring to make you want to upgrade to the 430 or the 440. But, they've given it something to put a smile on your face. And again, I just think that's a great win. Now, as lovely as this car is to drive on the outside, on the inside, it's super comfortable. I am gonna play a little bit of devil's advocate. So I've never been a huge BMW fan. And one of the main reasons that is, is because I feel like they are super stingy with their specification that they offer. It has got better. So they do now have lane assist. Um, I've got a digital dashboard, but adaptive cruise control is still not standard on this car. Standard cruise control is, um, but if you want adaptive cruise control, get this, it's an extra 3,650 pounds. Obviously you get lots of other bits along with that, which pretty much turn this into an autonomous driving car. But that is expensive. And especially considering in the um, Volkswagen Golfs, adaptive cruise control on their mid-range cars has been standard for almost five years. So I do think it's about time that BMW stepped up their game on that front. Now I love a controversial car. One of my favorite cars I've ever driven was a bright red Ford Mustang with a Roush exhaust. And the 4 Series kind of has that same thing about it because everywhere I go, everyone is looking at this car. I know we'll get used to it eventually, but at the moment, people are still making their minds up as to whether they like it. And that means that everywhere you go, everyone's having a good look. And I really like that. It, it also gives you something to talk about. If you're a car enthusiast like me, you'll enjoy talking to people about the grill and talking to them about the history of why it looks like that. I mean, just as I was waiting in the BMW car park to take this car out, a guy came over and he kind of had a look and then he had to look back and we were chatting about it and, and what I thought about it. And I like that, it's, it is a car enthusiast's car. They've been willing to take some risks and I really appreciate that from BMW. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you haven't liked it, then please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wanna see new car reviews. Also, if you're interested in the new 4 Series, then please give me a call on the number that Tish has put below. Make sure you get in contact with Claire for all of your 4 Series buying. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye. I'm cringing over here. Goodbye. <laughs>